Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss black holes. Or I guess more specifically, a phenomenon around black holes that's sometimes responsible for transforming entire galaxies. The phenomenon we sometimes refer to as the astrophysical jet, or the black hole jet, which is normally a kind of a bipolar structure emitted by various black holes in two directions, for reasons that are still not entirely clear. But based on some of the recent studies, we're sort of getting closer to possibly understanding how this works and why this is such a powerful mechanism that's actually been responsible for either killing or resurrecting various galaxies, depending on the strength of the jet and depending on the shockwaves it produces. And one of the most interesting and unexpected discoveries was only made a few days ago. This was announced by scientists using the Chandra telescope that basically spent several months studying a variety of jets around 16 supermassive black holes, with really only one purpose, tracking their progression over time and trying to see how they changed in the last few millions of years. And in order to study this, they essentially relied on observations from both radio light and from the X-rays. Because here the X-rays kind of show us the real-time events, the events happening right now, whereas the radio emissions can usually help us see something that happened a long time ago. For example, here are two galaxies, a Bell 478 and NGC 5044 showing us X-ray and radio emissions from the central region. And though it might actually look kind of hectic and possibly unclear on what's happening here, what does become apparent is the presence of these unusual radio bubbles, or I guess radio cavities, that were produced by jets in the past. This is essentially the result of jets pushing all of the gas out of a certain region, forming a low-density bubble. And well, almost right away it becomes clear that something here doesn't add up. The direction of these beams is completely different from what it is today, basically suggesting that millions of years ago these powerful jets were pointing in a very different way compared to now. And they've actually discovered this around several black holes, with some of them changing directions by anywhere from 35 degrees to almost 90 degrees which seemed to be the case for approximately 30% of all black holes observed. And all of this seemed to happen really fast, within just a few million years. And so here this is maybe a bit of a problem, because we usually assume that black holes generally stay stable in terms of their structure and in terms of their spin and rotation, which suggests that they should be producing jets in the same way as well. Yet these observations show us that jets do change orientation, implying one of several things. First, maybe we just don't understand how jets form to begin with. Second, maybe there's something about black holes that can actually change their properties in a relatively short period of time, thus changing everything around them. But more importantly, as we've recently learned, these black hole jets can have dramatic effects on galaxies where they're located and even galaxies nearby. They can usually push a lot of gas around them, forming huge cavities, which can then lead to star formation in what the scientists refer to as beats on a string. In essence, it's a kind of a aftershock, or an overdensity, produced by these cavities. But in some other cases, they can completely destroy star formation by replacing the gas that the stars are made from, or overheating it to the point where gas can no longer clump into stars. Which basically suggests that the direction of these beams is super important. If they start pointing in different directions around the galaxy, they can actually have a lot of unpredictable effects possibly star formation, or possibly removing gas from galaxies, not allowing stars to form. And so in some of these galaxies, where the jets change rotations too much, they can have some really unpredictable effects that we still cannot explain. Luckily for us, in the Milky Way, nothing like this has ever been observed, so we don't think this happens here. But it does seem to be the case for at least a third of active galaxies. But to try to understand how this works and to essentially figure out how this affects galaxies, the researchers are continuously using powerful telescopes, such as the famous Event Horizon Telescope, to assess nearby galaxies. For example, Perseus A, the closest active supermassive black hole, with the jets kind of providing us a few clues on how they begin. Here the study discovers that, as previously assumed, it seems to be the result of the magnetic field counterbalancing gravity and basically suddenly snapping, releasing everything all at once. And so in essence these jets are most likely produced by powerful magnetic fields, but also with a little bit of a help from super powerful gravity of the black hole and from relativistic effects. Specifically, as the accretion disk forms around the black hole, it seems to produce what the scientists refer to as magnetically arrested disk. 
or in essence, the magnetic field lines inside the disk become extremely intertwined and twisted because of the rotation, preventing the magnetic energy from being released. It's basically like a bunch of hair twisted into a kind of a braid getting stuck in a process. But this new research also reveals that, because the black hole here is also spinning itself, or essentially black holes rotate as well, and usually very fast, at some point this rapid rotation causes something to happen right above the black hole's event horizon, possibly snapping this braid and suddenly releasing everything all at once as a powerful emission that creates the jet. And so basically these jets are not really like lasers or even these smoky pillars you see right here, they're more like powerful burps coming from inside the black hole, formed by snapping magnetic lines, which get stuck around the black hole and only snap because of the black hole's spin. And interestingly, something extremely similar was also used to explain the effects around much smaller black holes, and specifically black holes producing gamma ray bursts. And so here, in certain situations, when a star collapses, producing a black hole and a gamma ray burst, the process that's known as the collapsar seem to have something similar going on here as well. And interestingly here, this actually started with a mystery. The mystery being that collapsars should actually be spinning pretty fast, because here we're talking about a star suddenly condensing into a tiny point, and since all stars spin, here the black hole would be spinning super fast, possibly at its limit. Yet surprisingly, pretty much every discovery so far, especially discoveries of various smaller black holes colliding and releasing gravitational waves, reveal that they usually have relatively low spin, possibly about 0.2 or lower. The maximum possible spin for a black hole is 1, that's basically almost at the speed of light. And so here it wasn't actually clear what's happening and why so many black holes spin much slower. Here we're talking about stellar mass black holes, anywhere from about 8 to maybe 20 solar masses. But we also know that collapsers generally result in a gamma ray burst, an extremely powerful jet that suddenly releases energy at very high velocities, with this jet itself still actually poorly understood as well. And so one of the recent theoretical propositions was that, well, maybe all of this is actually related. Maybe these jets get all of their energy from the black hole's spin, in a very similar way to how it actually happens around larger black holes. Basically, we get this super, super high magnetic interaction that suddenly snaps, releasing as a jet, but the energy for this jet comes from the black hole spin. So in other words, the magnetic energy here steals the rotational energy from the black hole, making it spin a little bit slower, but also suddenly releasing all of this energy all at once, actually making this a super effective way to convert gravitational energy into electrical energy. And so here by simulating a black hole, and by trying to create this spin-down model, the researchers discovered that, in general, every single one of these black holes after the gamma ray burst should actually have a spin of approximately 0.2, or maybe even lower, with the actual slowdown happening super fast. Basically, as the star starts to collapse, until the release of the gamma ray burst, it usually takes only 100 seconds. And in that 100 seconds, the spin of the newly created black hole changes from almost the speed of light to basically 0.2, or about 20% the speed of light. And this model and the explanation here actually provides answers for a lot of mysteries. For example, it explains where gamma ray bursts get this energy. It seems to really come from the black hole spin. And this also explains the formation of larger jets as well, because here the mechanism is very similar. Except that since this is a supermassive black hole and it has a lot more mass, only a fraction of that spin is stolen with every emission of the jet. This also explains why the LIGO detector, the gravitational wave detector, has mostly been finding black holes with a spin of about 0.2 or even less. They all seem to be formed in the same way, whereas following the merger, the black holes usually have a spin of about 0.7. And so here basically by using the black hole spin, we can generally determine how it was formed and if it experienced collisions before. But I guess just the idea of this spin down being the main mechanism behind all of this is already kind of intriguing and resolves a lot of problems. This is obviously just a hypothesis for now and more proof is needed, but it does explain a lot of things about jets and why they're so powerful as well. And so basically, in a typical collapsing star, as soon as the jet is emitted, which usually produces a tremendous amount of energy, this can slow down black hole spin to almost nothing basically showing us the extreme power of the magnetic fields around these black holes and how they're able to affect black holes gravitationally, even though all of this is electromagnetic in nature. 
although naturally the true mechanism is still poorly understood. Right now this is just based on observations and simulations, and basically just tries to connect various phenomena that we previously could not explain. And so I guess just to summarize this, we've actually discovered so much about the jets in just the last few months. First of all, they seem to be the result of the interaction of magnetic fields formed by the accretion disk and the ridiculously powerful gravitational fields extremely close to the event horizon. But the energy for these jets seems to come from the black hole's spin. And so the more powerful the jets, the quicker the black hole is probably spinning. With black holes containing a lot of spin, very likely responsible for some of the biggest jets. But intriguingly, around smaller black holes, this effect can even almost completely stop them from rotating, releasing ridiculous amounts of energy as a gamma ray burst. And moreover, a lot of these jets over time are somehow able to change directions, possibly suggesting that either the accretion disk or the black hole itself can basically flip around pointing in different directions over time. And so even though this kind of answers some questions, it also raises new mysteries. How exactly does all of this work and how exactly does this affect different galaxies? Now we've actually discussed some of the previous discoveries about jets approximately a year ago. The video should be right there, but we'll definitely come back and talk more about this phenomenon as new research provides more answers. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.